was going to be geared more toward tourists, and it is, visitors. But what we found um, early on when we gathered with the convening was, by and large, everybody there was having the same issues. They either couldn't get their information out about their events, didn't know and had conflicts with other organizations on the same date, right? A big gala or a big fundraising event on the day of a big festival in town or whatever. Um, and there was no coordinated spot to kind of talk and collaborate with each other between the government, the school district, the Stockton University, um, the theater, the art district, our Main Street program, our Chamber of Commerce, and all the other religious and community organizations in the community. So what we found was from that um, convening at Creative Hamilton in 2016, we kept our direction going for focusing on visitors to the community, but we added another layer, and that was for the locals, right? To really kind of engage the locals and the producing organizations, these event organizers. And so what we did was we started by, uh, after that, that convening, where we learned that the event organizers had issues. We also found out, because we had moms and dads and just citizens of the community at that convening uh, at Creative Hamilton, we also found out that they were struggling to find out what was going on in their own town. Small town, right? Two local newspapers covered just Hamilton and then others that cover the region and also Hamilton. So we're blessed to have a lot of media coverage, traditional and otherwise but they still didn't know because there was no one spot. So a, a busy mom or dad or a, a, someone who's working, it's a young couple, they didn't have the time to clear through all that clutter, right? So we decided, knowing those two pieces and working with our tourism piece, we decided to put it all together. But first we gathered. We gathered a group, a handful of, com of community organizers and in particular event organizers in the community. We didn't take everybody. We didn't start off with everybody because we couldn't. We started off with a relatively small group as a spin-off of Creative Hamilton. And the key thing, one of the key big takeaway points is we spent about six months after our, from our first meeting on just building trust. Now that's going to sound a little crazy because it's like who has time to do that, right? But the reality is had we not done that, we wouldn't have been able to expedite and move this thing along so quickly as some of you in this room know I like to move the couple of people that work with me know I like to move things along relatively quickly. But I learned through the Dodge workshops and so on over the years and other uh, good uh, experiences I've had that without trust among these different organizations and people, you can't take on big, complicated, multifaceted projects and initiatives. So we literally just went through a lot of different exercises over the course of, of about six months. And as an outgrowth of that, we found a huge amount of common issues and also common ground, right? So for example, if I'm, a, if I'm a, an arts group like the Eagle Theater and we're adept at marketing, but we just don't have a big volunteer base and our budget is very lean, right? Because we're a professional theater in, in Southern New Jersey, so it's a challenge. But the Lions Club in town, for example, has a huge volunteer base and they actually do a lot of regular fundraising and have a lot of donor support in the community. And so the idea of us collaborating for different events now going forward started to become an outgrowth of this. But more importantly, what we found was we're great at marketing and that was a weak point for them. So that's what we brought to the table. They couldn't figure out how, why they couldn't get too many people to their events because they didn't really brand them. They just were kind of a little more of an old fashioned kind of community group. So that's where we found we could intersect. But what we also found was that we all had the same issues. We couldn't, we, we had conflicts during the uh, year where we, we, were co -program, we were programming against each other and hurting each other. And we also found that we couldn't all get the word out exactly the way we wanted because there wasn't one central source. So we started small. We knew we couldn't take on all these issues, so we started small. We, formed a web, we created a website and an online calendar um, called uh, Hamilton.com. But in your areas, it could be whatever you want. And we all agreed that we would still keep our own sites and do our own thing, but that we'd work collaboratively through one. That might sound simple, but in a small town, just letting our guard down because we built trust, we gathered, built trust, and created a little common ground, it allowed our business groups and our nonprofit groups and, uh, and our government agencies to all work together instead of butting heads or being fearful that, well, for example, I know I felt comfortable enough to say, hey, you know, the last three events we had didn't make any money or made almost no money and we exerted, a, you know, used an awful lot of our resources, time, and capacity. I felt comfortable enough after six months starting to share that with each other and so did the other organizations. And so we started small, we started beta testing this website and this online calendar, which again sounds simple, but what we realized was the tourism piece of it and for visitors it's great, we can do all the big events, the festivals, the, the parades, all the things that people would come into town for, 
But what we really needed was a secondary piece in our beta testing, and that was a go local piece. That go local piece is a filter and a separate button that we actually haven't even launched to the public yet, but was an outgrowth of this beta testing for the last six months. And that allowed us to focus in on our own residents and our own uh, organiza local organizations, et cetera. So let's say you're a Cub Scout group and you're having a bake sale, right? Chances are that's not gonna rise to the top of the destination website or calendar ranking, right? But if I hit that go local button now and I go to that realm, it's all stored and managed within one overarching, easy to navigate, user submitted, but um, curated by us. Uh, uh, what's that? What is it? You want that? So we use Talkify. I'm going to get to that in a second, but you can use a lot of different ones. We did a lot of research to find a British, a European based company. Believe it or not, sometimes you have to go out of the country to find the right technology to work, right? So what we found was as beta testing now, those smaller events and, and uh, or, you know, and, and activities and workshops that while everyone in the outside of Hamilton didn't, didn't care too much or might not care that much about them, our locals did. So now we, what did we just do? We created even more buy-in across the entire community to drive more people to this website. And what does that do? Eventually we're going to get, you know, we'll have sponsorships and funding to go along with it as we build more um, user interest in it. But that beta testing is key. We've been beta testing for about six months. So we gathered and built trust for six months. We started relatively small and we beta tested. Embracing technology, the piece that we used, as I said, is Tokify, T-O-C-K-I-F-Y. Spelling's not great, but that's pretty close. So Tokify, T-O-C-K, I should write it on here, right? Probably, yeah, T-O-C-K-I-F-Y. We use Tokify, you can't see that from a user perspective because we embedded it and we use the white, we use the white label. So it's basically hidden from you. you you just see a calendar and it's embedded at Hamilton.com. But behind the scenes, the technology is called Talkify, yes. To start, we're not making anyone pay a fee. We are funded. We actually created, as part of this, we created an interesting funding source that I want to thank John over the years. Every year provides a wonderful endorsement letter and recommendation letter for our community. Our municipal government, we were the first theater, we believe, in the country, but certainly in New Jersey to get... Um, to be funded through the general budget of the, of the municipality for the purposes of tourism. So since we don't have a Convention and Visitors Bureau, we treated it under that arm of tourism as it relates to, because we're the theater, you know, so like that's the closest thing that, that there was to a, to a um, Convention and Visitors Bureau. But in our case, to answer your question, it was about, four, I'll, I'll give you the real, the real deal here. It was about $400 for the per year for the uh, for this white label meaning that it's um, the users can't see that it's Talkify to the outward world it's all behind the scenes you can pay a much less than that annually and and it'll just say Talkify on it which is no huge deal we just for branding didn't want to see that and um, a little bit for you know web hosting which is very minimal you know 100 bucks including you know everything um, and then honestly we paid about maybe 400 Four or five hundred dollars total to build the entire site and upload all of the data. Now I spent a lot of time, as did some other volunteers, gathering a lot of that early data with some of the other partner organizations. But basically, all in, call it around a thousand dollars to build the website from scratch and um, and the online calendar and pay for it for one year's time. So a thousand bucks in a community that should be pretty easy to achieve, I would say. There are plenty of people you need, but you need direction and you need to start relatively small. That's the key. The technology is out there. You could use Google. There's a variety of different you know, companies you can use from an online calendar perspective. We use Squarespace, literally just use Squarespace for our web hosting. So it's not anything too crazy and it's easy for us to navigate and adapt. But the other key component with a minute left that I'm gonna cover is this. As we were embracing technology and going through these processes, we wanted to remind ourselves how we started, which was through gathering and building trust. So what we created recently is a private Facebook group. It's, a, it's basically like a work group, but a private Facebook group that no one at the outer world can't see. And it's all, all for event organizers in the greater Hamilton area. That could be for-profits, non-profits, government, um, from the smallest little, little group or association all the way up to the largest you know, chamber of commerce and places like that, and everything in between, religious organizations, et cetera, everybody. And now they're all being invited to this private Facebook group so that then we can start to dialogue more. We, we started beta tested there too, very small, but now we're starting to expand it so that we can start to cross collaborate. So let's say you have a big new music festival that you wanted to start um, on, the, on the weekend of June 15th or something like that. 
well, that's the same day as, uh, as our big food truck festival in town. Maybe instead of that a year out, we could start planning to either maybe join them together into a food and music festival or, um, or maybe pick a different date and kind of collaborate. So that's what universities do. We're not a university, obviously. We don't have that kind of control. Well, they don't, I shouldn't say. <laughs> Some universities do, and they don't always do it. You're right. So the, the idea, though, is also it could help, for example, again, if you're that, um, if you're, let's say, a, uh, you know, a, a women's civic club in, in town, and you're very adept and have a great volunteer base, and you have a great event, but it's just not getting a lot of people out to it, we could help. Another organization might be adept at marketing, and that's where they can cross-collaborate with this private Facebook group to kind of intersect. Also, we can start to combine events. For example, we created what's called Green Weekend. It started off with just a, um, a Green Day Festival, our green committee in town that formed about 12 years ago. And then we, they, they did their own festival on one day of a weekend. And then another group was doing a community town-wide yard sale all over the community and publicizing it. And another group, the Education Foundation in town, was doing a... Um, uh, a shredding event, you know, a big community shredding event and also a recycling event for old electronics, glasses, all those sorts of things. We combined it together, created a marketing band over it to, um, to, to make that work and called it Green Weekend. Now, we didn't do that as an outgrowth of this. That's the only example I can find in our town prior to this where it happened naturally. So think about that. Over 10 years, let's call it, it never happened other than one time. So since then now what we're doing is we're all working together to intersect because we're all talking to each other.